So let's talk about magnetic disks, which today usually means a hard disk or a hard drive, but the so-called floppy disks are also magnetic disks and work very much along the same lines. It's just that today we mostly have hard drives and few people even remember floppy drives. A magnetic disk has a spindle to which we can attach so-called platters. All of the platters are attached to the same spindle and rotate at the same speed. Let's say in this direction. There is a motor here that really drives the spindle to rotate and that causes all the platters to rotate at the same speed. If we look at a single platter, it has a surface covered with magnetic material on one side and also on another. So a disk drive that has three platters usually will have a total of six surfaces. The data bits are on all the surfaces. We access this data by having a magnetic head attached to an arm and another one for the lower surface. And then all of these heads are attached to a head assembly which can move all the heads in unison. So if this head is here, this head will be in the same position on another platter and so on. We don't individually move the heads, we move them all at the same time. So because the platter is rotating and the head is staying in place usually, the head will be able to access this circle on the surface of the disk. Each head will be able to access the circle on its own surface and all of these are going to be at the same distance from the spindle. This is called a track. All of the tracks at the same distance from the spindle form what is called a cylinder. The cylinder simply consists of one track from each surface where the tracks in the cylinders are those that can be accessed by different heads at the same time. So for example here there are six heads. When they stay in this position and all the platters rotate they are able to access the six tracks of that cylinder. The way we access different tracks on the disk is by moving the head so that it comes closer or gets further from the spindle and that way we can access the entire area of each surface. So the data naturally will be organized into bits that are positioned along the track and then another track will have different bits and so on. If we look at the surface from above and this is now the spindle, this would be one track and this would be another. And finally on one track we don't store data continuously through the track because usually a lot of bits are on a single track. Instead the data along one track is divided into sectors and a sector will be the smallest unit that we can actually read. Now if the disk rotates in this direction and the head is currently here, as the disk rotates different bits of the sector are going to be under the head. So the sector will have some preamble here that is a recognizable bit pattern that tells the head that this is the beginning of a sector. Then we have the appropriate number of the bits for the sector that actually hold the data followed usually by some checksum and other information that is needed to possibly correct errors in this sector. And then another sector will just have the same things and so on. So when the head assembly moves to a particular cylinder, then the heads start listening for the beginning of the sector. Once they see the beginning of the sector and see which sector it is, they know where they are in the whole track. So the disk capacity can be computed as the number of platters times two, this would really be the number of surfaces, times how many tracks we have per surface, or expressed in another way, how many cylinders do we have on these disks, times how many sectors do we have per track, times how many bytes of data do we have in each sector. Usually we have a small number of platters, such as one, two, three, maybe four. We have thousands of tracks per surface, tens to hundreds sectors per track, and something like a kilobyte or maybe half a kilobyte of bytes per sector. So sectors are usually like kilobyte-ish in size, 
we have about a hundred, let's say, sectors per track, maybe a little bit more, and we have thousands of tracks per surface. Obviously, the whole thing needs to be very thin, so these platters are really close to each other. It needs to be, let's say, two and a half inches wide total, including the head assembly and so on. So the platters are only a couple of inches in diameter, and because we have so many tracks per surface, that means that the tracks are spaced very, very close to each other, and the head assembly needs to be very, very precise in how it positions heads.